Hello lovely people. Today we will be tackling time alignment. <sighs> so what's the plan for today? Because I, I read it in my system, I kind of did a quick dirty tune on it and I need to redo the time alignment because I changed the crossover frequencies for the whole system. So my time alignment um, is basically needed. I'm just going to go through the very, very basics. Because when you sit, when I'm sitting on here on the passenger side, I have these speakers are much closer to me than those. If I would sit in the middle, like I have my phone like in the middle, I would have exactly the same distances to the left and to the right speaker. And the sound that's coming from both speakers into the middle of the car, they're coming like at the same time. But if I offset myself to one of the sides, no, now I'm seeing the passenger side, but let's say driver's side, that means that from this speaker, the sound was going to come to me a bit quicker than from that speaker. And that means I need to delay this speaker so that uh, the sound would arrive to me at the same time and I will have the center image like in between the speakers. So this is just the basics about time alignment. Now, how do you do time alignment? How do you time align the speakers? Uh, there are a few ways to do it. The most simple one is to use a tape measure and to find out delays based on the distance. Yeah, so that's uh, number one. Number two, uh, Helix has an option. I do apologize, it's very dark because it's light outside. So Helix has a thing which is called automatic time measurement and it does this. So that's option number two. And option number three is to use um, external uh, sound device with an XLR microphone and to measure impulse response. That's the option number three. Now, bear in mind, all of these options um, will not give you perfect, perfect results. You will still need to dial in uh, the, the center image just because uh, you're measuring with a microphone from a single position, but you have two ears, you have like reflections and all that kind of stuff. So it still needs some dialing in. Uh, now, uh, about the dialing in, uh, actually, let me show you. So, yeah, what I'm going to do today is actually what I did already. I took, um, where is my, this one, this one. So I did measure delays using three methods. So using the Helix auto time alignment, uh, using just a tape measure and basic calculations and using impulse response. And I got these values for uh, left, right tweeter, left, right mid, left, right base, center sub, which is this one in the center console, and the rear sub, which is IB. So you will notice that for uh, Helix auto time alignment, I don't have anything for the rear sub, just because um, it's difficult to pick up the sub of a signal uh, with the Helix time alignment. So, let's get through the basics. How do you measure uh, with a tape measure? It's very simple. Basically, what you need to do is you need to align the beginning of the tape measure with... Now, again, some say you need to uh, align it with the cone of the speaker. Some say with the voice call and that kind of stuff. But, like, if you take a tweeter, the difference between the front of the dome and the coil is going to be very small. Same like if you have mids in the dash... You just measure until the dust cap because it's like uh, vertical, so it's kind of the same distance. Now, mid base, uh, you won't be able to see, is there, so that's the magnet as well. And basically, you're measuring from there until the listening position. So, in this case, I have my reference as this microphone. So, for example, this gives me so American friends three feet and how do you count this? Three feet and something. So 40 inches, which is like 102 centimeters, something like that. So you calculate all of these distances to different speakers. And then based on these distances, you need to calculate the delays. So some DSPs do have like, um, if, you, if Helix, for example, yeah? So you have distance mode 
and delay mode but distance mode you can enter basically here uh, inches or centimeters but it's not uh, the distance to the speaker it's relative distance so what you need to do you need to calculate all the distances and basically subtract uh, from the furthest one so the furthest in my case is going to be the subwoofer back in there and where you can use some some dsps you have to enter actual distances to the speakers but most of them is going to be relative so you need to find some kind of calculator so i'm using jazzy's tuning companion uh, jazzy's tuning companion and it has a tab uh time alignment here and here you can enter the actual distances so i use centimeters so you enter the distances to the speakers and it gives you the delay in milliseconds so see if i change this value this value is going to change so it's going to give me the delays already calculated you can find a formula by yourself and do all the calculations manually if you want to but this like some these kind of simple calculations are just uh it makes your life much easier, yeah? So you don't have to do everything manually. But if you want, you can do everything manually. It's basically based on uh, speed of sound, distance, and wavelength, and that kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And since I don't have, this one doesn't have a front subwoofer, I used 11 mid-range just for, uh, just to calculate this. So these are my values based on the distance. And I have them here. So these are tape measure based values that I have to enter into the DSP. These values, impulse response, we're going to go through all of this in the home impulse. So these I found by measuring actual impulse response. This means that I need to invert the phase. And this, these values I got from uh, Helix Auto Time Alignment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how all these three uh, differ in uh, impulse so how the impulse looks for all three different methods how close are they so it's going to be like a comparison between tape measure between automatic time alignment and between impulse response yeah so we're going to jump into the laptop to do this but before we do that um uh, i just want to say that all of these were done um uh, from the same reference point which is the tip of the microphone so now you see that i have two microphones why because uh for some reason uh helix automatic time alignment this one oh this one uh it doesn't measure for some reason with the xlr microphone so i had to use the umic one usb uh but i just put them together so they're going to be like very close to each other and the like the distance between them is going to be like uh you, we can ignore that so i did measure automatic helix with this one and the regular impulse response with the xlr microphone with the loop back and that if you want to see how to do this properly there is a tutorial uh, it's called uh impulse response with uh, home impulse now uh, so tape measure simple Tape measure, you enter distances, you calculate the dis de uh, delays, and you enter them into the DSP. Now, this Helix automatic thing, how do you do this? So with the Helix, uh, you have to choose the microphone. So you can choose the XLR, but it doesn't uh, measure for some reason. You choose this one, yeah? Then what you have to do is to find the reference speaker. So in my case, it says it has to be the closest one. So it's going to be on the right side, which is giving me the right mid base for some reason, not the mid range, because it gives me like this low reference channel. It doesn't let me to change the reference channel. So the mid base is the reference channel. And what you do, you have to play a, a clicky sound, which is this. And the clicky goes like tick, tick. Tick, tick. It, it basically jumps between the speakers and there is uh, between those two clicks there's a certain amount of time and helix measures that so basically it measures the acoustical uh difference and i always wondered um how accurate it is so that's exactly what we're gonna do and basically what actually i can try to demonstrate to you let me just shut the door so you do this it has to be loud okay so 
it detects the signal and now I'm going to press start. Yeah, and that's it. So it took well, a minute and it gives you like, you can listen uh, after the automatic and before automatic. It basically changes the delay values. And what it does, it does, it gives one click there, one click there, measures the dis uh, time difference with this, measures the time difference between those two clicks and subtracts the actual time difference between those two signals and it knows the delay. And there's a like, click, 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 and then it's click, 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 and basically it just does the acoustical thingy. So this is the automatic one, yeah? And I have the values already done, and here. And then uh, impulse response, which I have a separate tutorial for it. So now I have three different uh, methods, and from here I can already see that the automatic helix is a bit different, maybe because it doesn't measure the rear sub, but the relative differences between the speakers. So you have tape measure, you have one millisecond difference on the tape measure and on the impulse response, one millisecond difference. Here you have one millisecond difference as well. So between the tweeters left and right is the same kind of, okay. Now between the mids left and right, you have one millisecond here one millisecond here, and helix for some reason is two milliseconds, which for mid bass is not that a lot because the wavelengths are quite long. And for mid bass, I have one and a half millisecond with impulse response, I have one millisecond with tape measure, and four milliseconds difference with um, helix. And the sensor sub and this one is well different. So, uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump into the laptop, I'm going to show you all the impulse response measurements for all of these, we're going to compare them, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to sit in the driver's seat, and I'm, I'm going to see uh, with these values where the center image is, and I'm going to tell you where it is, and how much does it need to be adjusted to be in the center, and what to use to put the center image in the center. So let's jump into the laptop. I'm gonna show you all the impulse response measurements. Okay, so this is home impulse and I have all of these measurements here. So first I have uh, the first one skip. So this, these are gonna be measured with the Helix automatic. Then these are only tape measure and nothing else. And these are measured with impulse response. And uh, so impulse response you can measure with few different software. I'm, I'm just using Home Impulse because I'm used to it. I know how to use it and it's just easier for me. You can use REW or you can use um, Open Sound Meter or if you have a thousand dollars or pounds to drop on a software, uh, Smart. But I'm using this. So let's have a look. Uh, this is, let's start with the impulse response, yeah? So I have rear sub, front subwoofer, and actually, let's remove the mid-base. Uh, yeah, did I play with this? 4470. Uh-huh, I did play with this. This is 4450 offset. There we go. Okay, so this is uh, taken with an impulse response. And I'm looking at the phase. Uh, here where the drivers are overlap and in the impulse response. So I have like zero time somewhere here and this is my rear sub and front sub. So they're not perfectly in phase, but they are in phase. Now let's add one of the mid base. That's the right mid base. And I'm now looking at this region. I'm going to remove the rear sub. Actually, I'm going to put left uh, mid base left base right base okay so left base right base and there we go a bit more so you could see there we go so they start at zero and again they're slightly off the phase is slightly off 
but it's like i don't know maybe like 40 degrees off so i would need to work on this because i just literally did these measurements very quick with no adjustments so maybe an all pass filter maybe something i don't know we'll see but this and if i remove the front sub the left and right mid base match perfect in phase and in time just like that now let's add the mid range Uh, mid left there we go so now it's a bit difficult to see the time but again uh, it's a bit after zero starts but they're in phase uh, left base left mid why is the right base right base there we go so in phase in phase these are overlapping the phase is perfectly matched yeah between the mid range and the mid base it starts somewhere here now let me add right mid base uh, right mid ir there we go right mid base i'm going to remove the mid base uh, mid mid yeah so left mid range right mid range they match in phase and as you can see in time now they start at like here at two but again this is just relative so it's not that important what's important in, is to match the phase between the base and the mid-range and then i'm gonna add the tweeters so that's impulse response tweeter left and as you can see uh phase again match is very nice below 2k like here i have reflections from the window so this kind of screws up everything but here the phase matches perfectly and left tweeter ir and right right tweeter ir let me remove these and again we can see that uh, just like that so they're in time and in phase so this is done with the impulse response now let's have a look at uh, tape measure so with tape measure i have these ones so i have rear sub i have uh, front sub tape measure tape measure there we go Okay, so this is just with a tape measure. And as you can see, they are kind of in time and kind of in phase. Uh, it, it's not a perfect match, but it's not that bad. If I add a mid base to have a look, left mid base. There we go. So the left mid base starts here at zero. And here is a bit of a mess. But here, if I remove the rear sub with the front sub they're kind of out of phase especially in this region because if I would flip uh, where is it left base if I invert the polarity they're in phase so basically this needs uh, flipping the phase and they will be in time and in phase and left mid base and right mid base okay so left and right these are just with the tape measure and as you can see they're almost perfectly matching they're matching very very nice so tape measure for mid base it is accurate it's not as accurate for phase matching with a subwoofer but for this it's fine now let's have a look where the mid ranges appear um tape left mid so they're kind of in time uh, let me do this yeah so yeah like maybe two milliseconds off and the phase is off as well between the mid-range and mid-base let's have a look left mid-range and right mid-range there we go so again tape measure between left and right spot on in phase and time but they're not in phase with the mid base but between themselves they're fine let's have a look at the tweeters so right tweeter again in time because it starts at kind of zero so they're in time 
and almost in phase, a bit off, but almost, and right tweeter, just like that, yeah, if I remove this, yeah. So with the tape measure, the tweeters are a bit off, but again, this, uh, for tweeters you need very, very little, they're off by what, 0 0.2, 0 point, no, point, 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 two milliseconds or something like that so it's extremely extremely close so the tape measure um, it's very good between the speakers it's not as good for phase matching it's not as accurate but for between the speakers it's spot on you can use the tape measure and just adjust by ear and we're gonna go through the adjusting by ear now let's have a look at the helix automatic thing so for the helix i'm not gonna check the rear subwoofer because uh it didn't measure the rear subwoofer it's only the front subwoofer so front subwoofer helix um uh, right mid base and left mid base so let's have a look. Yeah, so the subwoofer is a bit off. Which one? No, one of the mid bases is off. The left, right. So this is the reference mid base. So for some reason, it's a bit off by quite a lot. As you can see, this peak is six and a half, and this one is one. So it's like by almost five milliseconds off. And if I remove the front sub, uh, it is a bit of a mess between the mid-base drivers, but with the front. So front sub is kind of okay matching with the left mid-base, but not with the right. So for some reason, uh, left and right mid-base with the Helix Auto Timeline is a bit off. Yeah. Now let's have a look mid-ranges. Uh, left mid-Helix and right mid-Helix. Have a look okay close to zero and again a tiny bit off off by uh one two so one millisecond off by one millisecond between left and right and kind of in phase but here is off just because of that one millisecond if i would uh remove one millisecond from the right one it would go back and it's gonna be fine now let's have a look at the tweeters left tweeter helix and right tweeter helix uh, let's zoom in just like that yeah so they're very close very close to zero very close to this so the tweeters are okay because you will still need some uh, manual adjustment yeah so helix automatic time alignment uh, for some reason screwed up with uh, mid base and I guess it has something to do with uh, this one um, where is it because of the reference channel it might be wrong but I don't know how to change the reference channel so it might be because of that but between the drivers between the mid ranges and between the tweeters it's not bad it's good and oh one thing i'm going to show you where to find it so if you open helix tool and you go to this uh, note icon you open this and here you have the automatic time measurement and this is the file that you need to play to have those clicks click 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 so this is the file cool so we had a look at the impulse how it actually looks like now what i'm going to do i'm going to sit in the driver's seat and i'm going to listen where the center image is from all of these different uh, delays. And I'm gonna give you some feedback and see which one uh, sounds the best. Okay, so how do we verify the center and how do we shift it, how do we change it? So, um, I probably didn't mention anything this before when I started. Uh, this system that I have is fully EQ'd properly with all the slopes matching and everything nice as supposed to be. And the only thing uh that's supposed to be changed is the time alignment so uh the eq between left and right left and right is matching almost perfectly yes, yeah? so we don't have to worry about eq at all so i did verify i did enter first i'm going to start with helix i enter all these values 
and I just double checked with RTA that I have a summation. It's not like mid between out of phase because if it would be out of phase, it would be a big null. So I did double check it. Uh, I'm not worried about the linearity because it's a quick dirty tune, but it's just for this. And other thing that you need is some kind of a track that is centered. So what I'm using uh, from Emma, uh, from Emma Disc, is the new MF disc and I'm using these positional tracks. So I have position left, right, center, left, center, right, center. I'm using these positions and the most important one is the center. And, and from my experience, if you catch the center, like center between the speakers, left, center and right, center is gonna be there. Now, if I play this, yeah, I put it on replay and what it does, it gives me voice, guitar, a bell, and something like very high frequency. So basically for all the drivers, different. Center. Now, if I listen from my position, I can hear the center is there. Let me actually remove the tablet. So it would be out of the way, just like that. Center. So it's somewhere there. Yeah, so it's somewhere there, the center, and I would need to be a bit there. Center. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to double check uh, which, is it all drivers the same? So I'm going to play only the mid bass drivers. I'm going to mute all of them. And I'm going to leave only the mid bass. I'm going to increase the volume a bit. Okay. So for the mid bass, okay, I choose the wrong one. Yeah, so somewhere there, somewhere where my left foot is, it's supposed to be like in the middle of the dash, but it's somewhere there. So that's the mid bass. Let's have a look at the mid range. Center. Yeah, so somewhere there as well. So basically like this. On center. And let's have a look at the tweeters. So the tweeters are slightly, slightly to the left, a bit more. Center. Yeah, so center is there, and the tweeters are slightly, slightly a bit there. So, uh, let me mute. Okay, for the Helix, when you play everything, I don't know if you will be able to see, I'm gonna try to move away as far as possible. The center is there. So I need to shift it towards that side. So some people, how do you shift? Oh man, it's so hot. Some people say, how do you shift the, the center image? So what you need to do is, uh, some people say play with the levels. Some people say play with delays. I always play with the delays because the levels, I know that level between left and right is spot on close to 0 0.1 dB. So I know the level is fine. And if I change the level, it's going to shift the image. If, if for example, I'm going to lower the level on this side is going to shift the uh, the center to towards there however that side is going to sound um quieter than the left and i don't want that i want them to be on the same level so how do i do that so let me uh take the tweeters so tweeters is enf if i open them and e and f this one so on this one I have 0 0.1 and with the arrows I go up and down and see it changes the value. Center. So if I listen Okay, other way. So I I was going like on Center. plus like this and I can feel that the image is shifting towards there even more. 
So let me put it back to 11 where it was. It was on 11. Okay. Center. Okay, so for some reason I cannot catch the center with this. I'm going to leave it on 11 center. and I'm going to try the right side. So it was 1.16. Okay. Center. Okay, so now my center is there. And I went from uh, 1.16 to 1.34. Yeah, let me check again. Center. Yeah, that. If I add more, let's add 1.5. Yeah, it's somewhere there. You're basically adding delay and it moves Center. like that. Yeah. So it was 1.3 something. Yeah, so now it's there. So I needed to add uh, zero Center. point. Actually, let me uh, mute. Mute. I needed to add zero point one five, zero point one, zero point fifteen milliseconds to the right one. Oh, it's so hot. And it shifted the image towards there. And then between left and right, I would have like one point one millisecond and it would be perfect. So you can do the same with the mid ranges and uh, mid bays as well. So this was for Helix Automatic. Now I'm gonna change the delays for uh, tape measure. Okay, so enter the values for the tape measure, which is the second row over there and double checked with RTA. So the first measurement that I did was the red one. And you can see here, it was out of phase. So the mid range was out of phase with the mid base, but the rest is fine. So I just flipped the polarity of the mid range in the DSP over there. And then I have the red line, which is uh, the black one, sorry, which is this one. So it, it might be the tweet is out of fade as well, but I'm just gonna leave it for now. As it is, yeah. So just double checked. And now where do we have the center with this one? Let me close the door. Same center track. Okay, I'm sitting there. Center. Yeah, so the center is... Um, Helix was a bit more to the right towards this uh, towards the middle of the steering wheel The tape measure is more to the left like in between but not, not as close to this as I would want it to be now Let's have a look uh, single drivers. So let me remove all of them. Let's leave only the mid base Okay, let's play center Yeah, so it's it's somewhere there no, because with the helix it was there. Now it's a bit there, so it is closer. Yeah, it is closer to the center, but not perfect. Let's have a look at the mid range. Center. Okay, so with this one, it's just I, I was showing you there, but because the phone shows like this, so I'm just not gonna show it on the phone. It was the center was there, so it is closer to the center compared to the helix. But one the cowbell that ding ding was so it's like let me show you. Center is there, guitar there, and then no, this is there. There's a tick, tick, tick. So that tick, tick was on this side for some reason. Center. I don't know why, because the EQ is done good. 
And let's have a look at the tweeters. Where do they center? Is there someone there? Yeah, so tweeters even more to that side. So the tweeters are giving me center more to this side, more like a helix. Yeah, so mid range is there, mid base is there, and tweeters are there. So you just need to ship them again. And for the last try, let me um, check the Im the ones that I did with actual impulse response. Okay, in the last one, I entered all the values from the impulse response, double check the RTA. Again, mids were for some reason out of phase, so I just flipped the mids. Now everything is in phase. Let's have a look where the center is. Center. Yeah, so it's very similar to the um, tape measure, which was somewhere there, and the tweet is a bit to the right, but very, very similar. So what I'm going to do now, very quickly, is I'm going to put it into the center. I'm going to start with the tweeters. Remove, 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 remove. Okay, so these are my tweeters. Center. No, that's mid-range. There we go, tweeters. I'm going to take the right tweeter. Sorry, you cannot see. Right tweeter. I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to... So now it's 3.7. And I'm going to like either go that way, either go that way, until I'm going to catch the center. So let's see. 3.7. Okay, so if I remove delay, it's shifting. If I remove delay on the right one, it moves that way. So we need to add delay to shift it there. So it has to be more than 3.7. Let's go back to 3.7 like that. And let's add a bit. Okay, let's listen again. Center. Okay, the guitar is right spot on in the middle. Yeah, somewhere there. So ting ting in there. So on the ting ting, ting ting pulls to the right side for some reason. And now I have uh, 3.8. So I added uh, 0 0.12 milliseconds so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add 0 0.6 yeah so 0 0.6 to this one and i'm going to remove 0 0.6 from the left so zero so now i need 2.3 Again, so this is specifically my method. I'm not claiming that this is correct way to do it, but uh, because basically what I'm trying to do is I'm kind of trying to balance out. So uh, I don't want to change only one driver. I want to change both. So I'm just going to remove a bit from there, add a bit from there. And ideally, let's have a look. Yep. Spot on there. Yeah, perfect. So it is It is there. So I'm going to leave the tweeters like this. Now let's have a look at the mid-range. Set the mid-range. Mid-left, mid-right. So it is somewhere there. Now, uh, center. again, let's choose the right mid-range. This one, and I need to add. If I want to shift, I want to add delay to that side. So now it's 3.4. Center.
center. Perfect. Now it's spot on there. And now I have 3.6. And I forgot how much I had before. 3.5, 3.6. Okay, so 3.6, I'm gonna do uh, like this, and I'm gonna add. No, remove from this. Okay, so let's double check. Center. Yep. A spot on there. Okay, perfect. So Center. this is done now. The mid bass. Let's catch the mid bass. So for the mid bass, it's best to do this in the middle of the night when it's dark, so you don't have to trust your eyes. So left and right. Okay, so left mid bass, I have zero milliseconds, so I cannot do anything with it. I can play only with the right. Let's have a look. I need to increase the volume because the mid bass is very low. Okay. I know you cannot hear anything, but... Okay, so I need to remove... I'm removing a bit to push it to the... Okay, good. Last try. Okay. Oh, I changed the track. Center. Okay, so now the center, if I like imagine a little line there, it goes like in the dash. So I just want to make sure that the center comes like from this part, from the dash. Not not like from here, because if, if you put it like here in the middle, then if you go up, it's going to be more towards left, right, uh, left center. So I want it to be in the center. So I need to make sure that it sounds from that because it comes from the bottom. So I need to make sure that it sounds like there from the left side of my leg. And now it sounds like from there. Yeah. Spot on. So now I'm just going to untick uh, the tweeters and the mid range. And center. Perfect. Yes. Spot on. Everything comes. Okay, let me stop this. Cent there we go. So now everything comes. Like I have a very good guide, which is like this one, which is a, like an alarm thingy. So I can visualize if I like this. I know everything comes from that. And that is exactly like in between the speakers yeah so everything now comes from there so what i do again just to summarize uh how i do my uh, time alignment i take impulse response measurements and after i've done those i do adjust tiny bit so i ended up at 1.69 for this one so i might again just play it a little bit with it remove like 0.1 from that one and add 0.1 to the left one, just to balance it out. So this is my way, how I do it. And you basically, you need a track, some kind of a track to catch that center. If you have like a, a song that you know that the singer is somewhere in the middle, it's good. But like this Emma track is, is from the new, the newest one, um, 2021, 2022. And it has like all the instruments that go through all the range from mid bass up to like tweeters, which is great. So you can see if anything pulls. So now like, uh, what would you do if you're playing, for example, uh, this track and you have one of the notes like guitar uh, going to one side, pulling to one side and everything else is in the center, but one instrument is pulling to that side. You go to Emma's website and uh, download the rule book uh, actually, let me let me find it quickly. 
Okay, so fine. It's so in Emma's SQ judge book, the, all of these sounds that are in this track have a specific frequency. So the guitar that you hear is centered at 200 hertz. So if you know that, for example, all the sounds playing nice in the middle, but the guitar pulls like to the left side, then you, meet, you know that it's a problem with those 200 hertz range. And you figure out which driver plays that range. So it's going to be probably the mid bass. And if you have your mid bass in the left, the guitar is going to, mid, mid bass in the door, the guitar is going to pull to the left just because at that frequency, your mid bass might have some acoustical problems and you literally cannot do anything. And if you have a problem with like, uh, cowbell or whatever which is like at 800 hertz is going to be like with the mid-range uh, speakers it might be like a reflection or something so basically it's good to narrow down with this track where you have kind of problems but yeah so this is time alignment um Remember, a few ways how to do it. You can use like acoustical nulling for phase matching and that kind of stuff. But it's like it just is playing around. Uh, you can have really good results with the tape measure. But with impulse response, you know that you're spot on. Perfect. Uh, just tiny, tiny bit of adjustments. Just because our head, our ears is not a single point uh, microphone. And we do have reflections for high frequency and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If I did something wrong, you think that I'm doing something wrong, please comment below. Let me know how to improve this. And if it helped, happy days. Cool. And uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.